For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Welcome to this awakened generation with your host, Mazino Abraham Eboku. We've been on a series of God's agenda and we have started to talk about God calling us to be priests and kings. We are part of a royal priesthood. We need to understand these things. I had taken the time to explain to you that there was a time that the church, a predominant part of the church, knew who they were. They understood their priesthood and their kingship. It's for that reason you find out that some people of old, David Livingstone, Henry Stanley, Samuel Ajayi Crowder, some of these people, they went into heathen territories. And as they entered there, they were able to reclaim those lands. Understand what those, in many of these places, there was such idolatry. There was such demonic operation. What could make these men enter and establish the dominion of Jesus Christ in these places? To the place that they affected us generations after. And something has begun to happen that's causing us to lose these things in this time. We have to fight to regain this same knowledge that they had in those times and one of the things they understood they understood the agenda of god and 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 as we go on this year we, we have to lay hold of it we have to understand that we must go beyond that church at some point in time a great portion of our churches particularly in this country we begin to misunderstand who we were we were come or sent here or raised up as a salt and as a light. And it's not just about coming here for ourselves. The truth of the matter is that if you are still a child of God and you are still battling for yourself, then you are far away from where you ought to be. The Christian calling is not for yourself. You are supposed to deal with the aspect of yourself, there is no doubt. But you are supposed to move beyond yourself. If you live your life and at the end of the day, all the spiritual resources you get was for you. All the graces, all the knowledge, all the understanding, and all the gifts you had was so that your, your life would be good and your children be good. Then you are going to be most miserable. The calling of the child of God is salt, is light. And that takes effect when you take your place as a priest and as a king. You preserve the world around you. You change the world around you. And this was not to be done in the flesh. It was not done by any instrument of mankind. It was done because you were truly a priest of the Most High God. And you were king of the Most High God. And we have a king of kings. We have a priesthood and a high priest. And he sends us, he deploys us with the resources of his kingdom. And when we implement and employ those resources of the kingdom, there must be results. Where there are no results, then we have a problem. This is why 12 men with their disciples were able to get the gospel through all the six or five continents and more and all the hundreds of nations across the whole world. There's no place in the world right now where Christ is not at least represented. Some of the thickest and most difficult places the gospel has reached there. How? Ah! It's not the weapons of man. And so as we 
begin to contemplate Easter, I wanted to, to try and share a message that is Easter-like, but is still in line with what we are talking about. Okay? It's still in line. It's still in line with the priesthood and the kingship of the believer. Like I said, you must speak to yourself. You must speak to yourself in such a way that when you come to church, when we gather together, what are you coming for? You are not just coming for a personal high. You are coming to be equipped so that you can go out, you can go forth. We've seen that oftentimes people come to church and at the end of the day, they're looking for a personal high. I just want to, I just want to, you know, get something that will inspire me so that I can go for fight my life. It's, it's affecting the body of Christ. That's why even the average Christian today has, cannot, the average Christian, I'm not talking of everybody, has not been able to transfer the gospel from themselves to their children. I'm talking of the adults. They've not, talk less of the world around them. You don't understand. It's such a monumental fight of Satan against the church. When God spoke about Abraham, he said, I know him, he will command his children's children. That means there's a deliberate effort. There's a deliberate operation. There's a, de there's a consciousness around them that they were going to transmit, they were going to translate. They were going to transfer. They knew that this is not just about me. I'm going to pass on one day. But how have I been able to create continuity? So because the, the church kind of was post-church for you, just... You're going to be blessed. You're going to be rich. You're going to be favored. So everybody, a lot of people start to come to church thinking it's me. It was, the church is a training ground. You, on your own, each and every one of us, ought to have churches everywhere. As a parent, your church should be in your house. As somebody who works in an organization, your church is that organization. Everybody is a, is a minister of the gospel because everybody is a priest. Everybody is a priest. The Bible says that he gave all these apostles, teachers, pastors, and co. So that we will train people to do the work of the ministry. Everybody is doing the work of the ministry. Everybody is a priest and everybody is a king. It wasn't to stop with you. You are a pastor. You are an apostle. Some are going to go to the marketplace. And, and they will be prophets in the marketplace. People will recognize it. Because they recognize who they are. So there's been a terrible loss of identity. And I'd like you to be patient and learn and pray as you hear these words. That the Lord will cause them to be engrafted in your heart and produce fruit from your life. As we've been talking, that we are kings. You see, God always wanted a situation for his children in Christ. We were come, born into, into war. We, we, we have to fight. We were born to stand the gap. When we understand these things, it will no more be too mysterious. When we start talking about intercession, when we start talking about prayer. The child of God, as it were, was supposed to leave from the garden of Gethsemane to glory. They were supposed to leave from Gethsemane to glory. Which is, in Gethsemane, there was a burden. It was a burden of God's will. How do I birth God's will? In fact, how do I birth God's will without passing through this challenge that I'm going to pass? God always gives a word. During the Friday um, incense that we have, the Lord gave us a word. And he keeps reminding me this. That for many of us, the word that he keeps giving, there's no strength to give birth to it. And the Bible says that so many of them, the word of God was spoken, but they didn't have faith. So he didn't produce anything. It is possible for God to speak to you and it won't produce. If you study the promised land, when God says, everywhere you step on, I've given it to you. Go and read Joshua well. They didn't take everywhere. They could not take Jerusalem. They could not take some places. And if you read it, you will find out that those people, they were afraid. They didn't know what price to pay. They couldn't pay it. Some of them would run away.
some of them would they, they would they would they would say the wrong things they were thinking the wrong way they, they would not trust god and they were not ready to fight many of them were just not ready to fight but those who were the calebs of this world they took impossible mountains god wants you to birth divine destiny each and every one of us we were born to birth divine destiny you're, you're not called for yourself you're not called so that you just do one little small thing oh my father is a millionaire my mother is a billionaire and so for that reason my life is going to be easy even if you're the child of a billionaire there's something divine about your destiny that god wants to do and anything pertaining to divine destiny there's impossibility attached to it by your strength you cannot achieve it and that is why god gives us prophecy that's why it gives us a what some of us are coming in this time and I know that anybody who calls himself a remnant at this time has work to do. We must call again. We must travel again as priests. Because priests come at a certain time and they see a certain thing that is denying the glory of God. And their work is one in the place of intercession. That's priesthood. Priesthood is attached to intercession. In the place of intercession and travel, we take it out of the way. In the place of travel, I told you last week, that you see who can give birth to a nation in a day we read that was it isaiah 66 and um, verse 5 6 7 8 he said have you heard of such a thing that somebody just gave birth to a nation in a day he said have you ever seen a woman who just came and then she just got pregnant and just delivered like that there's no labor there's no travel he says who has heard of such a thing i read you a scripture last week also in isaiah and, and chapter 33 was it where he says he says to israel he says the children have come to the birth but there's no strength to deliver the baby and that's what is happening in a lot of christians in a lot of our lives many people have come to a place where god has spoken his word they know the word of god that word contains divine destiny itself is that by that same word that god was speaking that the whole world came to be he said let there be and there was that's why he says that there's no faith if they don't mix it with faith so they are not able to carry it to travel and travel god gave me specific instructions a few years ago i want you to pray x amount of hours x amount of days for a season i want you to fast x amount of days for infinitum until i tell you to stop for a season in between here and there i was a bit careless and negligent and from time to time to the lord again reminded me say i'm not moving forward to you, with you until you fully that's talking to me until you personally fully you've conquered some territories but there's so much more you have to conquer unless you obey this priesthood instruction there are priesthood instructions this is what every child of god must do paul when he saw the galatian christians he cried he said my little children who might travel again in birth until christ be formed in them that means he traveled before that means before they were even born again before they even came to the knowledge of jesus christ early this morning my wife and myself woke up and we began to travel we began to pray for the church for our families for our children and, and, and we're going to travel that certain things will happen you're a parent have you started to travel for your children for their future i want to show you the negligence that is going on in the church my house is supposed to be a house of prayer we to, it's a struggle satan has so capped the priesthood down so that a lot of christians are not functioning as priests that all so 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 great powerful calling and grace that god has given each and every one of us for you to function as a priest they are finding it difficult to even intercede for themselves maintaining a one hour prayer meeting even once a week is difficult meanwhile for some of us god wants you to get to five days a week Two hours every day because there are things he wants you to sort out in china but you you, are, you have not even dealt with you because you are asleep some people think oh no prayer ministry so then pastor on dbc and pastor wrote to me they are the ones in prayer they learn and pray not for people like us this, this is a prayer it's not true you are a priest of god my house must be the house of prayer priesthood is a call to travel it's a call for you and i we need to deal with issues but we've allowed distractions to take the place and so that's what jesus showed us in the garden of gethsemane it's a place of travail 
It's a place where he saw the will of God before him. The Bible says, who for the glory that was set before him and endured the cross. In Gethsemane, he was wrestling with the will of God. Take this cup away from me. Because this weight is much. I, I want to bet your will. And so in the process of betting the will of God, he enters into a travail. And that travail causes him, the Bible says, to pray to the point that his sweat was like blood. His tears was like blood. He was interceding so earnestly. And we see, we see the same thing happening. The same strategy that Satan employed against those 12 disciples that were with Jesus have come again against the church. Some generations overcame it. We must overcome it. If we have to birth divine destiny, we must overcome it. Some generations have overcome it. And they did overcome it. And they saw the glory and the move of God. They saw the will of God. They saw the purpose of God. Like I said to some people where I ministered the other day. I said, it was so common in those days. For the average Christian to know what it's like to lay hands on the sick. It was normal. We didn't pray much about it. It was a normal thing. He prayed and then he cast out the deafness. And I, I went for a crusade once. And in praying for somebody, the blindness left and entered another person. And we went to the person, removed the blindness and left. It was like that. We're holding blindness. We're holding deafness. It was in our hands. We prayed for people. I remember in one of our services in Joss, uh, 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 Captain Do, Do Darlington Do. I, I mentioned his name, the pastor, now he's, he's a Liberian. His daughter, her ear drum was burst out of the Liberian wall. A bomb came and blew up and the sound bore, tore open her ear drum. Right there in the service, the Lord constructed a new ear drum for her. The service closed that day. Everybody went hysterical. 18 year old girl. The thing closed, it wasn't normal, these were normal things. It was normal that people possessed with witchcraft walk into our services and they couldn't stay because the, everybody was a flaming fire. You came around anybody, you were going to burn. Because he made his ministers flaming fire. But something has happened. And Satan has injected something against the church. So that even in the home, the average parent cannot establish their priesthood in the home. There's no prayer even in the home. How much more in our communities? How much more in your organizations? Everybody is now thinking of me, myself and I. And it is this blindness that has allowed Satan to creep in. Pornography has entered the whole place. Our children now, they are, they, are, they are almost like children. They are not, but they are almost. There's an attack, and it smells like an attack on them. This smell just came in, and so right now, what is happening is that every young child that comes into this world is going to face a battle of pornography. Go and look at that. We have started casting out demons and, and, and ministering to six-year-olds because of pornography. Six years old, six, 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 six. We have started ministering to eight-year-olds and seven-year-olds because of lesbianism and gayism. Yes, it's happening already. Because somebody is sleeping, a generation is asleep. The priesthood is asleep. They don't understand what it means to be in the garden of Gethsemane where we birth destiny, where we birth the will of God, where we birth the resurrection power of God. It's in that garden resurrection power is birthed too. If, if, if Jesus did not pay that price in tears, if he did not know what it meant to live from glory to glory, you know what we hear from glory to glory? We think it's just so easy that you just sit down. It's not true. There is a labor involved. And just like that scripture says, who has heard of such a thing? In Isaiah chapter 66, it says, who has seen such a thing? That the nation just comes out? Can I tell you that you are a nation? If you don't see yourself as such, every destiny is a nation. It's a nation in the eyes of God. When God spoke of Jacob, when he spoke of Esau, they were nations. Even if all you're going to control is your children, those children will become something else. You are birthing destiny. Destiny is being birthed. Elkanah and Hannah, they are a nation. Through them came out Samuel. Through Samuel came out, we don't even know who Samuel's children are afterwards but they were like allies children that's what we know so what, what we, we need to get this right you cannot understand christianity by coming and thinking even so, sometimes the, the message of salvation is wrong today jesus died and it's all about you so if, if you're poor you're going to be rich if you are healed sick you're going to be healed yeah all of that but that's beyond the gospel is beyond that the gospel is God came to raise you and establish a priest on this earth. A priest is not here for himself. 
a king is not here for himself you are here to reign on behalf of others you are here to rule on behalf of others you are here to establish the counsels of god on behalf of others when god says thus say the lord when a word of god comes forth when a prophecy comes forth you bring it to reality that's the birthing that's the divine destiny we are able to implement what god has said for example god says over my household the path of the justice has a shining light and god gives me that word and he confirms that word that this is what i've spoken over you yet i begin to see all sorts of negative signs check yourself check yourself you're not birthing things satan is going to do everything to make sure that there's the exact opposite of what god has spoken happening in your life he's going to distract you you know he doesn't want you to become a priest over nations or a king so what is he going to do let us keep him fighting with himself i was watching one of these spy documentaries can't remember uh, which one now but one of them i watched so many of them all these documentaries and they were saying how that one of the strategy these people do is that when they see an enemy who is a formidable enemy they try and create a problem around that person that will keep them bogged down so they don't have time to plan and strategize against the, the other country so they just keep you so what they do is that like look at iran now what's happening in iran i don't know what's happening or look at libya let me use something that has happened libya libya went and killed american for ambassador and everybody they said no we, well, i don't know who said so but somehow or the other we just discovered that they became problem inside libya until they started fighting i didn't say anybody didn't know but they found out that all kinds of rebel groups began to rise up until the libya became in civil war they don't have time to fight anybody outside again now nobody's bothered about libya going out now libya has problem of their own inside do you understand what i'm talking about if the devil can keep you fighting with yourself inside then he doesn't bother whether you're going to take over maryland he doesn't bother whether you're going to take over nigeria so he can have his way he can raise this priesthood of darkness one priesthood of the sun priesthood of the moon priesthood of all kinds of things and they'll just be having a field day because they who are supposed to be doing they don't even know who they are they are caught up in some kind of miry clay as it were they are caught up in some kind of sinking sand as it were look at the average woman today many christian women they don't know how to travel in their home nobody ought to scatter your home the reason why a lot of homes get scattered not the only reason but one of the main reasons is because people are sleeping and there's some damage that can be done that to retrieve it again is going to be very difficult that is why Satan, like now they've come in with pornography it's going to be difficult because the young i find out that every young person if i go for a young seminar uh was well, you know what i'm telling me the other day of suicide the suicide way because they, they've entered into that you went to minister in some place where there are youth people and suicide so many of them about 20 or so came out for prayer that, that who want to commit suicide this is a level of frustration because there's no how they're going to be bound by all kinds of dirty sins but i mean i remember praying for a young man who they brought from another church and he said to me he was homosexual and he wanted to be delivered and he knew this thing wasn't right he wasn't always like this and we we we, we began to pray he said i've been everywhere from here to there to there to there to there he was at the verge of suicide frustration that's what is going to happen when we go to sleep and it has already begun to happen so this season god wants to raise us up everyone who is identifying with this ministry and this voice you need to sit down and take a cursory look at yourself am i truly a priest of god there are certain things you have to settle jesus had to settle certain things in the garden of gethsemane he had to settle it he just had to settle it he had to settle the fact that he's going to be so bruised he has already read it he knows it as the spirit of god has revealed it to him he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our sin was upon him despised of men is there isaiah 53 he knows all of this rejected the bible even tells us that his visage was so mad that means his appearance was so damaged it was mad it was destroyed beyond comprehension so he already knew the suffering he's going to go through he already knew the pain he was going to go through but he labored 
The Bible says he labored, he traveled. Who has heard of such a thing? He knew something that we must all know. As long as God has said it, it shall come to pass. But it will only come to pass for those who have faith and will travail through the process. There's a traveling process, my dearly beloved. It's the thing that priests of God know. That's what makes priests have faith. Priests do not just sit down idly. If not, you are not a priest. A priest is not one to just come and say, I'm a priest of God and I sit down. No, 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 no. The fact that God spoke to Israel, remember, and said to Israel, I have promised to give you this land flowing with milk and honey. Moses became a priest, don't you know? Of God, the Bible tells us in Hebrews that Moses was faithful in his house, as Jesus is faithful in his house. Moses, the Bible came and he stood, and even though he made, eventually made, uh, God made uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron the high priest, Moses became the priest of Israel, as it were. That's why when they went into sin, he would get upset, break that uh, uh, Ten Commandments and, and break the uh, stones. And, and, and he had a burden for the people. He wanted to take the people from here to there. Understand this. The burden of the priest is to take people from where they are to the will of God. To the real fulfillment of the will of God. That means wherever, whatever God speaks, a priest lays hold of it. He takes it and then he knows work has begun. Labor has begun. As it were, God's word is an impregnating resource. It's an impregnating seed. It is similar to what happened to Mary. That the Bible gave God a, Mary a word. He said, you will be with child of the Most High. So the Lord impregnated her with the Son of God. And then she carried that baby to travail for nine months and gave birth to Jesus Christ. Each of us, every word that God speaks to us, there's a process of traveling. You don't sit down and say, I'm a priest, I'm going to sit down, I'm just going to wait, I'm just one day, I just make a declaration, ah, but I believe your word. It's a lie. You're going to birth it. Moses took the word of God and says, I'm going to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. People have been crying, they've been crying, they've been crying. Priests have been praying. And then the set time came. There's something of priesthood attached to set time. I'm getting there. But Moses, now the set time comes and, and, and people have been crying unto God. So God says in Exodus and chapter 3, I have heard the cries of my people. I have heard the cries in Exodus 3 and verse, verse 7 and 8. I have heard the cries of my people and I have come down. Listen again. Please don't take this for granted. In Exodus and chapter 3 from verse 7. He says, and he said, I have heard the cries of my people and I am come down to deliver them. He says, I have surely seen the affliction of my people and I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster. Imagine if there's no cry. There's no cry. What is a cry? It's a travail. It's a travail. It's a travail. It's a, I have heard it. And I am come down to deliver them. So God responds to our cries. Look at uh, Jeremiah 29 from verse, from verse 10, 11, and 12. You will see timing. You will see the will of God. And then you will see the cry of the people. If you take it backwards, they are crying because of the will of God. And it will happen in a certain time. So it stays here. It says, For thus saith the Lord, this is Gethsemane, Gethsemane, cross, and resurrection but thus saith the lord that after 70 years be accomplished at babylon i will visit you i will perform my good work do you see this he watches over his word to perform it the performance of the word of god is the glory that we are it's the same glory that jesus is looking for It's the glory we are looking for because god's word is good for us god's word is wonderful for us god's word is glorious for us but how do we birth it